Hey, Zach here from Frontenac Outfitters Canoe and Kayak Center. Today, we're gonna have a look at five essential items you have to have with you on the water. Plus, I'm gonna give you some extra tips on what else you should have with you on the water. First up, I'm sure you've seen this before, is the, uh, the orange bucket, the Coast Guard repellent. Why do I call it Coast Guard repellent? Well, you know, the uh, safety patrol rolls up on your water and they, ideally you're wearing your PFD and they ask you, you got your, your safety, your required safety equipment? You grab your orange bucket and say, yes, I have my safety equipment and off they go. So, Coast Guard repellent. Practicality wise, uh, I don't have a lot of love for the orange bucket. Works all right in a canoe, but most of the stuff inside here is pretty useless. Got a whistle that has a P in it. So once this gets wet, it's not gonna work super well. It's supposed to be a buoyant heaving line. They give you this yellow nylon rope, which uh, if I need to throw to somebody, well, I don't know. So, I don't know, we'll, uh, we'll do something with this anyway. So, won't let you down anymore. We've got a beautiful little plant holder, uh, color coordinated for safety orange. All right, so on a serious note, so when I'm looking at the safety equipment that I'll be using uh, and purchasing, I take into consideration that oftentimes I'm not purchasing the safety equipment for myself, but I'm purchasing it for the people that I'm going out with. You know, a lot of this gear I'm not gonna be using for my own personal self, but in an event that somebody else needs help, it's gonna be going to them. So I wanna make sure that it's, it's quality, it's not gonna let me down, and it's gonna last and be reliable. Uh, for years to come. So let's have a look at a few things. So there's a little bit of misclarity maybe uh, in the Transport Canada regulations as to what we have to have. Uh, we fall under you know, the same regulations as a small boating, uh, like a small fishing boat. And so we have to share a lot of you know, that same idea of the gear that we have to have with us. Um, you know, falls under that, that small boating act. Uh, so it's not gonna be specific for canoes, kayaks, sups, although there are gonna be some clarification in the guidelines as to what you need to have with you in certain types of vessels. So this is not gonna be comprehensive. Um, you know, the regulations can change. Uh, so be sure, you know, you stay up to date with Transport Canada uh, standards and, and regulations as to what you need to have with you while you're in your canoe or kayak or sup. So let's have a look at some of, you know, what the, the, the bare necessities are and what doesn't seem to change over time. So number one, PFD. Does it have to be worn? No. Should it be worn? Absolutely yes. Please, please buy a good PFD and wear it, all right? I know it's hot and you're in shallow water and it's not gonna happen to you. That's what everyone says and every year people drown. So put on the PFD, all right? Next video, I'm gonna start swearing. Second item uh, is a bailing device. In a kayak, uh, bilge pump gonna work really, really well. Uh, anything other than, unless you're in a really large opening cockpit, isn't really gonna work very well. Uh, so you know, keep in mind buying a quality bilge pump uh, that's gonna be reliable and work well for you on the water. Our, our little bailing bucket here. Bailing buckets, you know, this is probably like actually the only good piece of equipment that comes with the thing because you can actually scoop water if you're in a canoe, but that's, that's it. it, makes a really good plant holder. To go along with my, my bilge pump, I've got a bilge sponge. This is just a just a fancy sponge wrapped in like, you remember that ShamWow material? It's like that. It's uh, uh, really, really good at mopping up the, the last of the water that the pump's not gonna get and ex you know extracting a good amount of, of volume of water and it just tucks in beside my seat so it's super convenient to have with me all the time. Back to my PFD. One thing I like to have on my PFD is my little whistle, all right? This is your standard Fox 40 classic, nice and loud, P-less, so it's gonna work even when it's wet. Um, you know, whistles have their limitations, but you do have to have a noise-making device with you uh, while you're out paddling, uh, so I recommend having it attached to your PFD just in case for whatever reason you get separated. You do have this as the, you know, a very basic form of communication that if you need a signal for help, you can do this with this guy right here. Uh, we talked about a buoyant heaving line. Uh, this is one of my preferred ones. I've got a couple different styles of rope bags depending where I'm gonna be going. Uh, this one is the, the typical one I would have in my sea kayak or even in my whitewater kayak. Again, kind of depending where I'm going. It's a low profile, clips on easily uh, to either my body or into the boat. And if I need to grab it really quickly, it's there. Now, why a rope bag as opposed to just my nylon rope that I threw away? Well, the way a rope bag works, right, is when you deploy it, the rope just kind of continuously falls out. So with a lot of accuracy, I can just kind of give it a good underhand toss and get it to where I need it to go. That's it, okay? And then I can pull that person back in, um, especially if we're in white water or current. If somebody's been uh, capsized out of their boat and has maybe let go of it and we need to get them back in because it's really windy, uh, that's gonna be my tool of choice right there. So again, I wanna make sure I can get it to somebody. 
And then kind of the last piece of required gear is a, uh, a waterproof light. You know, the, the Safe Boating Act or, or, you know, Transport Canada does state you need a 360 degree light. And there are lights that you can buy to purchase to, that will mount onto the back of your kayak. Um, and they work fine. Uh, nothing wrong with them. If you're going to be doing a lot of night paddling, especially in a busy area, I would certainly consider that. Myself, I don't do a lot of nighttime paddling in busy motor traffic or motorboat areas. Uh, so I just carry a headlight with me. Um, also got a little light that can connect to my PFD and I can just turn it on so I have something on at the back and then I've got a nice waterproof light that goes on the front. Uh, you will need to make sure that it works uh, to appease, uh, you know, uh, an officer if you do get pulled over. You can't have a non-working flashlight. Now, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, gray area in, this, in the terms of where and when you need to be using these. You know, it's within an hour of sunrise and an hour of sunset. Uh, I would say just have it with you all the time. Um, just, you know, periodically check it, make sure it's working, put it in a dry bag and just have that as part of your kit. So that basically covers all the kind of required pieces of kit. So, you know, not, there's not a whole lot that we really have to have with us to, to stay safe and legal on the water. Now th that list, like I said, it's, it's kind of, you know, we have to interpret it as to where we're going, what we're going to be doing, where we're going to be paddling and, and kind of packing our, 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 our loadout for for those types of conditions. It's not gonna be the same if I'm just going down to Perks, our little lake in the back here. It's very, very small, it's, you know, very much a, an inland lake. And, and at that point, you know, it's not much bigger than a pond in reality compared to if I'm gonna go paddle down off the shore in Kingston or Georgian Bay or Superior. Uh, you know, my, my kit, even for a day trip, will, will likely change fairly drastically in the amount of equipment that I'm gonna bring. But certainly a few pieces of gear that I rarely leave without. Uh, so a small first aid kit, uh, you know, I feel really important to have with you. Generally not so much on the water you're going to get injured, but a lot of times getting in and out of your kayak or canoe on shorelines, slipping, falling, these types of things, just being, you know, a little bit of prevention right here, right? Having that, uh, having that first aid kit with you. And also I would recommend getting some first aid training, at least, you know, that basic two day course. If you don't have any, it's, it's really simple to do. And it's going to give you some knowledge to, to just be a little bit prepared. If you already have first aid training, you're doing more, uh, outdoor style trips. I would have a look at the wilderness first aid courses, extremely valuable for, uh, for any of us that are going to be out in the wilderness environment. It's going to give you a little bit more knowledge and, and experience on what to do in a wilderness situation where we can't immediately get help. So I recommend looking into that. Uh, some basic forms of communication, um, cell phone. Yeah, these things are, they're, they're great. Sometimes we want to get away from technology and we don't want to bring our phone with us. And that's fine too. The, the most basic form of communication other than our voice is in, and we're talking in preparedness here is going to be to, to have a float plan. Um, and you can download one from our website. We'll give you a link in the description. Um, essentially, this is just a, a sheet of paper. You're going to fill out who's going with you, where you're going, time you left at, time you're going to be back at, uh, and uh, kind of a hard cutoff time as to, you know, when we don't get back, who should you call and when should you call them? Uh, you would leave this with, um, you know, you can leave with the Coast Guard, uh, someone, you, you know, you trust in, uh, or a loved one or whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as you're leaving with someone and you're checking in with them when you're back in off the water. Really, really important. That way it's going to, you know, lessen any confusion if you don't come back. Uh, and if you haven't filed a trip plan uh, or a float plan, uh, it could really lead to some some problems uh, with search and rescue trying to find you and they don't know how long you've been gone. They don't know where you're going. Uh, so this is, you know, the most basic form of communication. And we, you know, we really, really stress this throughout the Pilot Canada curriculum, doesn't matter what discipline you're in, uh, of letting people know where you're going to be and when you intend to be back. Um, with the cell phone, uh, you know, Definitely, I recommend putting it, you know, these are fairly inexpensive. It's not cheap, but uh, the Aquapack, uh, there's other manufacturers that make these, these good quality cell phone cases. Uh, I don't think a Ziploc bag covers it. Um, this guy here is going to work, going to keep your phone dry in case of a capsize and say you get separated from your boat. At the very least, if you have cell signal, you're going to be able to call for help. Now, with that in mind, uh, if you haven't spent a lot of time in the wilderness or the backcountry um, or even offshore, I mean, you know, you don't even have to be, we're, we're 30 minutes from Kingston and uh, most cell phones won't actually work up here. So really important that you're prepared with other forms of communication because the cell phone, not the most reliable at this point. So more and more cell phones are uh, being created that are waterproof and water resistant and, and that's great but a nice you know another nice piece of value on this is just that lanyard uh, you know I can attach this to my PFD or I can wear it around my neck uh, so that I don't accidentally drop it you know if you've ever been in cold water and suffering even mild hypothermia your your fingers can can be really hard to you know to manage and call numbers and stuff or even just holding that phone uh, so one wrong move and all of a sudden it could be at the bottom of the lake 
Uh, this is a pretty handy little piece of technology here. Looks like a walkie talkie. It's actually a VHF radio, so it's gonna be used for marine environments. Uh, I can contact Coast Guard, uh, other shipping channel, or sorry, ships in the area. And I can even use it to communicate between party members if we're a, a bit of a distance apart with these guys. Uh, you do need a restricted operator's license in order to, to use one, but it doesn't mean that you can't purchase one and, and have it with you in case of a real emergency. Uh, you know, you just get on channel 16 and that's gonna be your local Coast Guard. And if you're in distress, you're not gonna be at fault because you're in an emergency situation and you don't have an operating license. I would recommend, highly recommend that you get one so you know how to properly use the radio, its capabilities. It does have limitations and it's got huge advantages. So if you're gonna be paddling on any major waterways on the Great Lakes, coastal environments, I would highly, highly recommend that you get one of these and have it with you. And lastly is just, you know, again, part of good planning is, you know, having a map and a compass uh, and knowing where you're gonna be going and how to interpret this data uh, to use for yourself. You know, having a map and compass is one thing, but if you're lost, you're lost. It doesn't really matter on here if you don't know how to how to use this information to, to figure out what, what your position is on this map. Having a bit of knowledge and how all that works, really, really important. A couple of things I'll take with me, just mainly in my sea kayak, because uh, they're kind of specific to to a sea kayak, is a paddle float. All right, um, this here is a, a re-entry device to help me uh, or somebody else get back into their kayak if they capsize and we're having a hard time getting them back in. Maybe the conditions are rough, uh, or they, you know, they're just struggling to get back into the kayak. Essentially, this is uh, just a big buoyant device that comes in a couple. There's there's different configurations on how these work. I would recommend getting some training on how they work. Um, you know, maybe we'll do another video on showing how these guys are, are operate you, you really got to practice using these because it's not super simple once you've done it a few times though and you keep practicing it's it's like second nature and another really neat device here is called a rescue stirrup this one here is made by Northwater, but you know these things you can you could manufacture a custom one at home just out of some webbing the nice thing about the manufactured ones is we got some floating neoprene here an adjustable leg loop i know you probably don't know what the heck i'm talking about unless you've used one before but if anybody is having a hard time with that paddle float or getting somebody back in their kayak this thing here is an absolute lifesaver and i carry one with me everywhere and again it's not not for me uh, maybe one day it will be but at this point i don't necessarily need one for myself to get back in but if somebody's in my group and they're struggling to get back in you bet your butt i'm getting them back in that boat and if i need to use this tool i'm using this tool gotta remember to stop and smell the flowers <laughs> So this is just a really quick summary of uh, some of the basic items that we should have with us. Like I said, this, this can change depending on the environment I'm gonna be going and paddling in. So really important for you to be able to assess where you're going, uh, what you're gonna be doing, how long you're gonna be paddling for, and that will kind of change how much equipment you need to take with you. I do recommend you take a Paddle Canada course, whether it's with canoeing, kayaking, stand-up paddle boarding, because uh, we really get into depth about you know different things that we can take with us uh, to, to have a more enjoyable day, right? And we do offer Paddle Canada courses here, uh, so we'd love to have you come out for, for one and, and try it out. You know, we didn't get into food and water and, and sun protection and cold protection and all these other things, because there's a lot that can go into even planning for a for a, uh, a short day trip, never mind planning for a longer multi-day trip or, or expedition. If you have any questions, uh, as always, give us a holler. Uh, you can send us an email, info at frontknackoutfitters.com. If you want any more information on any of the products you saw here today, uh, we'll put links to them in the description. Thanks for watching, have a great day.